Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 811. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 806 to 811, click on the link below the video. Oh, this video, this is one of the coolest tricks I've seen in a long time. Circle chicken at Mr. Excel message board. There's the link if you want to uh, download it right there. Posted this solution. It was just so cool. Now, here's the setup. We have a two-way lookup, and the person said that they had a data dump like this, a trial balance from an accounting system. So it always came like this. And they absolutely, they were given a list. They were given a list of account numbers and departments. And they had to have a single cell solution to add. So in essence, they wanted to do a two-way lookup, right? So you have to look up this and figure out the row number. So that'd be row one. And then this, that'd be column two. And then take that number, right? That's a two-way lookup. But they needed to do a two-way lookup for lots of items and then add them. All right, let's look at the long uh, hand method of doing this. We can do a two way lookup using index and match. So the array index is great. You can have a two way array because in order to find an intersecting cell, you need a row number and a column number. I'm going to hit F4, comma, and then the row number and column number. This setup is perfect for match function because match can look up a number and tell us which row or column. So I'm going to for row number, use the match function. Lookup value is going to be this, comma. The lookup array is within this. Now, right now, it's going to look up that and say 1, right? And that's what we want. That's what the index needs right here is a 1 for its two-way lookup. And I'm going to go um, comma 0. We uh, These numbers uh, look like they're sorted, so we could get away without it, out it. But let's leave that there, comma, and then um, match. OK, so now we need a column number. I'm going to look up this comma within this array right here. And I'm going to hit the F4 key, comma 0. The reason why I'm putting 0 is because there's a little alternative at the end where uh, it, it, we're going to need exact match. And it, But if they're sorted and you're only using this range, you do not have to put this in. The default is approximate lookup. And since the numbers are sorted, it will work. All right. So now, let's just take a look at this. This should give us a 1 if I hit F9. Control-Z to undo that. And this one should give us uh, F9 should give us a 2, Control-Z. All right, so that's the longhand method, right? And doing this longhand method, um, if you know anything about array formulas, should maybe give you an indication of how we might be able to build an array formula. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But all it did is look that up. We drag it down here. So it's looked up each one of these, right? So this 640, is the 412. 640, so right there. And then you add them. Now, normally, when you see a column of formulas like this, you can um, look at this and go, OK, well, here I looked up an individual number right there. And here I looked up an individual number right there. So really, it's like if we could throw the whole column of the values into there maybe we could build an array formula. And that's how I thought at first. And actually, Circle Chicken and a, and a couple other people were posting and uh, said, yeah, I tried that also, and it didn't work. All right, so I would think that we could go like this. right? And then that's, I would assume, if I highlighted this and F, hit F9, it would give us all these intersecting values. When you hit F9, no way. Now, maybe I could. The evaluator doesn't work, so I'm going to try it with sum. Maybe it, you know sometimes the formula value gives you a value error, but really, if you put it inside another function, it'll work. I'm going to Control Shift Enter since this is an array, and I only get the first number, right? And I actually posted and asked, man, does anybody know? I mean, I'm assuming that what's happening here is the array. This is programmed to accept arrays, so you could have an array in that argument, but Perhaps um, this function is programmed to not allow arrays there, or at least not in this cir circumstance. Both Circle Chicken and I you know, posted questions to find some of the smarter Excel people at the message board saying, hey, what's going on with this? Why? What is it about index that doesn't allow this? All right, so we'll leave that there, because that's a, uh, at least a, an intelligent try. But here's what Circle Chicken did. He, um, went ahead and used those two matches 
Um, and we had to add two because we're two rows down. And then he put it inside the address function, which will give us the addresses. And I'm going to build this in just a second. And then he took the indirect of address, because address uh, gives us uh, a cell reference as text. And that gave us all the individual cell references. Uh, and then there was a, a problem with that. But if you put it inside a transpose and then sum, it works. So let's build this uh, one step at a time. We're going to use our two matches. And we're just going to look at the first match. All right, so look up value. Hey, I'm going to say, hey, put throw all these in there, comma, and then look up array, comma, 0. And let's evaluate this, because really we want all the row numbers. So for we should get a 1, a 2, a 2, a 2. So a 1, a 2, a 2, a 2 looks like a 4 and a 5. And when I F9 this, sure enough, it does work. So the match function. Control Z can handle that. But and I'm going to enter this just for a moment. But some for some reason when we did that over here in the row number, it just the index didn't pick it up. So no problem. Um, I'm going to now use the address function. Now the address function is cool. If you give it a row number and a column number, it will give you the address. Right? So check this out. Again, F9, that's giving me all the row numbers. That's in the row argument. I'm simply going to do the same thing up here for this. This will give me all the column numbers. And the address will spit out a bunch of cell references. All right, so let's do this. This is exciting because this is an example of where we have these two matches with array. The address can handle it, whereas it looks like the index wasn't able to handle it. All right, so now I got all of my department numbers here, comma, within this range, comma, 0. Right? And just to jump to the chase, let's check this out, F9. Oh, that is so cool. The address does what it's supposed to. It delivers cell references, but as text. And we'll fix that in just a moment using the indirect, Control-Z. I just want to check this out. I'm going to enter this. And then I'm going to do this little trick where you go like this, F9 and F9. Because this is, I mean, in terms of array formulas, that's pretty beautiful. It, we're throwing in array, array, and it's giving me this, the address for row 1, column 2, row 2, column 1, row 2, column 3, et cetera. Now I'm going to click Escape, because I, if you F9 two times in a row, it hard codes them in. All right, now, address, as we saw, spits this out as text, but no problem. There's a function specifically built to take cell references as text and convert them back to cell references. That's what the indirect does. And you can highlight this and hit the F9. Ah, OK, so now we see a problem. It's actually not working because what? That's 1 in our array, but the address needs 1, 2, 3, Control Z. So what are we going to do? We're going to plus 2, right? Because it address absolutely needs the actual row numbers, 1, 2, 3. So it needs 3 for this, the, whereas the match just looked at that and threw out a 1. All right, So you could do plus 2. And over here, we need one more, so I'm going to plus 1. And so now when we highlight this and hit the F9 key, oh, that is absolutely magic. Now, here's where it gets a little bit odd. You know, Immediately, I thought, well, I can see those numbers. I'm just throwing that in some product, Control Z, or sum and uh, Control Shift Enter, right? And so I hit Enter, and it's not working. And again, both Circle Chicken and I, and Circle Chicken actually posted a bunch of cool alternative formulas with different functions. And the the bottom line is, Circle Chicken was saying that you have to have some other function wrapped around the in this whole piece right here. And it could be anything. It could be sum or some product or transpose, as he used. Uh, any function. All right, so we're just going to put sum. Right? I chose some product on the outside, because then it, uh, I don't have to use Control Shift Enter. And so I hit Enter, and boom. Now, uh, Circle Chicken actually went like this, sum. And then transpose. Whoops. 
And then he had to use Control Shift Enter because the sum was on the outside. Now I'm going to Control Z. I also had one other uh, incarnation. I used the N function. The N function, and actually these little screen tips in 2010 are awesome, converts a non number value to a number. So I just used the N function and then Enter. Now, uh, whoops, whoa, escape. Now, I did one last little thing. Instead of having this plus 2, I extended the range. So notice it's A3 to A7. So I just changed this to A1. All right, so now it's actually looking through that range, and that's why I put a 0 there, right? Because then it's going to look at a blank in account, but now it's looking for an exec value. And same over here. Instead of the plus 1, I put A2. So right now, so it's going from there to there. And so now it's, the matches will actually deliver the correct uh, row and column number for the address. In either case, if you were to insert a row up here and push this down, either this setup right here or the adding the 2 and the 1 would then give you an incorrect answer. But for this setup right here, enter works just fine. All right, uh, totally amazing. Uh, solution here posted by uh, Circle Chicken. Two different formulas there. We'll see you next trip.